All right, Dimming 66 questions, part three. Uh, we're not doing all the questions, just skipping through some that I uh, thought needed some extra attention. Uh, now, here we are at question number 31. You'll notice, as I've mentioned, that Dimming is not just about management. It's about marketing as well. You've seen in that, that little sketch that he did for the Japanese where we have the customers over here, we have the suppliers over here, sorry, uh, and then we have our operation and how important it is to get feedback from the customers. That was his message to the, to the Japanese and if it involves <coughs> the suppliers, they need to get that information too. <clears throat> so we all operate in an open system where we're communicating with the customer. Now this gets personal because you're on the border of uh, critiquing uh, the, the, the interviewer, uh, the interviewee, uh, their company, their product. Uh, it's beginning to get a little bit personal. So we have to be careful here. But let's read through this. Uh, knowledge about your customers' relations with your product. What do you know about the problems of your customers in their use of your products? What are they going to say? Uh, well, we've had a few problems about that. Or uh, No, there's no problems. We keep selling. We keep selling. Uh, what tests do you make of your products and service? So, products and problems in service. So, have they tested it? Have they looked? I'm thinking of two products, right? Well, three. Corned beef is difficult to deal with. Not that you want to deal with it. Tuna fish. Now, how do you get the water or the oil out of the tuna fish? That's a problem. My big sack of cat food that I get, I pull the the cord that's supposed to open up the bag, it doesn't work. It just slides out and breaks. Um, so uh, what do you know about your, your customers and, and them using the product? So how do your customers see your product in relation to competitive products? How do you know? What data do you have? He's going to keep asking for data. Uh, I think they say, in God we trust. All else bring data. Everybody else bring data. Uh, why do they buy your product? How do you know? What data do you have? Problems customers see in your products. How do you know? What data? Problems they see in the competitors' products. How do you know? What data do you have? Do you depend on complaints or warranties where people say they have to come back and say, you know, I want my money back. Now, I'm thinking of a company who went through, I'm trying not to say, uh, went through this diagnostic. Went through the diagnostic, didn't have any problems. Didn't really take improvement seriously. Didn't think it was needed. Didn't do anything. The attitude was just a flat line. Now, I, reading with, during the presentation, asking questions. Why do they have this attitude? Uh, what, what problems? Uh, how do they, why do they buy yours? How do you know? And I would imagine they didn't care. They didn't care. It was just, uh, I guess sales are fine. We're just going to ride it out. We're just going to survive. Transformation of management is not needed. Now guess what? Two, if not three, competitors have shown up. Within six months, there'll be two to three new direct competitors within a quarter of a mile who have brand new buildings. You know, they have service, they have the appearance, all of a sudden, I go to the, because I didn't know about those, the new one that opened. I went to the, the one that 
the diagnostic was done on it. Oh boy, they're out there helping, you know, doing it. Ah, oh, come on, man, you just lost. You just lost. See, that we're going back to part one, I believe it was, where survival is an option. You don't have to transform. Transformation, constancy of purpose ain't important. Well, this is where an example of a company who was a fool and a proximity monopoly. Took advantage of it, didn't care. No continuous improvement, no PDSA cycle, nothing. They have one competitive advantage at the moment. It's an ATM. That's a good reason to go to this place. But guess what? The ATM's often broken and nobody will tell you. They don't interview the customers and put up a sign and say, sorry, we've called the bank, the ATM should be fixed, you know. No, just let you walk in there, it doesn't work. No attention to detail, no caring for the customer. So anyway, okay, <laughs> they should have been listening to this. <clears throat> After a four hour interview, at least you would think that they would something would sink in. Okay, so <clears throat> I just gave you an example of, of a company who, yeah, it was kind of a monopoly in that area. Uh, they didn't care how you saw the product or the service. How do your customers see your product in relation to the competitive products? How do you know? All of this is about market research. You got to find out what problems people have with the product, all of this. So uh, it's going to be a touchy situation asking these questions. <clears throat> you can, if they say, if they say, uh, people don't have a problem, well, what data do you have? What, what surveys have you done? What observational research have you done while they're trying to use the product? So those are good things. Depend on complaint. We don't get any complaints. Well, you know what? When people are upset with your service or product, a lot of times they don't complain. They just leave and go complain to everybody else. So paying attention matters. Uh, so this is a, a good, good section where dimming is marketing. It's not just management. 